What is up, my friend? Welcome to episode number 116 of the Anthony Trinomix podcast. And today I'm bringing you a guest to teach you how to manifest anything you want in your life. So if you have desires that you want to create during this lifetime and you want an edge to make those desires a reality, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Welcome to the Anthony John Amix podcast, the one and only podcast designed to help you become unstoppable in life and business. My name is Anthony John Amix. My friends call me AJ. And my goal with this podcast is to help you remember who you truly are so you can maintain your center in the chaos, embody your potential, and unlock freedom in your life and business. That being said, let's get into today's show. All right, welcome back. Now, before I bring on today's guest, I want to let you know about my book called Mindset is Not Enough. Many entrepreneurs are always looking for an edge, an edge in their marketing, an edge in their sales, an edge for embodying your potential. And a lot of people will tell you that if you get your mindset on point, then you're going to be successful. Well, if that was true, wouldn't everyone who's ever read a personal development book be successful by now? If that was true, wouldn't everyone who's used affirmations and other powerful reframing techniques, like wouldn't they be successful by now? I'm sure you probably know at least three people who've read a book or recited some affirmations that have shaped their mindset or their outlook on life, and they still don't have the results that they really want. So there has to be more to the game than mindset. Well, after guiding hundreds of people to creating results in their own lives, I've found there is something I call your body set. That will always overpower any mindset work that you do. And I dive deep into this concept in my book called Mindset is Not Enough. And you can get the entire book for free by going to ajamex.com slash book. I've even had one guy tell me the book that was so profound and shaping his life that he listened to the book every day for a year. So again, go to ajamex.com slash book to get the entire book for free right now. Now, with that being said, let me tell you a little bit about today's guest. Her name is Heather Hakes, and she's been into the personal development game since she was like 15 years old. She's always just been fascinated with the teachings of psychology and science and really believes that science demystifies the mystical. In 2017, she took a huge, ginormous leap of faith and followed an intuitive nudge. She waved goodbye to her corporate world knowing there had to be a reality. Like she didn't want to continue dreading Mondays and cheering on Fridays for the rest of her life. And after making that leap, she learned firsthand how the universe had her back. After quitting her job, she manifested a six-figure payout and spent the next two and a half years traveling around the world. She's a recovering type A planner and is obsessed with manifesting her dreams and helping others do the same. And she's learned how to really create an image or desire in her mind and allow the universe to show her the way. And today she's coming on the podcast to share what she's learned. So with that being said, let's bring her onto the show. Heather, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. I am super excited to have you. I thought we'd talk about like how to manifest your desires in 2017, you left corporate. How, and then, you know, you manifested everything. How was that journey for you? Man, okay, yeah, let's go back a little bit. So, my background, I've been into personal development since I was 15 or even before. I remember even in elementary school, Oprah, you know, she shared having a gratitude journal. So, I've had a gratitude practice. That's something I do every night before bed. I think of five things from that day for any, actually, last night was the first time I, I really had trouble, like, what happened today that I'm grateful for? But I started that in elementary school. In high school, I really got into personal development books. I love psychology. And um, then, you know, in 2007, The Secret came out, The Law of Attraction. At first, I'm like, this is total BS. Then I got over myself and I watched it again. And then for fun, I started having experiments. And no, Law of Attraction is a universal law, just like gravity. So we are manifesting every single day, just whether or not you're aware of it, whether you're consciously creating or living life by default. So fast forward to corporate 2017, you know, I just, I, I did what we're supposed to do, what we're conditioned to do. I went to college, I got a degree, I worked in corporate, climbed the corporate ladder. A decade in, I complained to my parents all the time how unhappy I was, I hated the monotony, and then I literally took a huge leap of faith. I didn't have a plan. And I finally just quit my job. And literally the day after I gave notice, my boss's boss came into my office to, you know, bid me farewell and thank you for my service, blah, 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 and handed me a note. At the time I worked in oil and gas and they had IPO'd a month prior. I didn't think that meant anything for me, but anyway, I ended up with a $175,000 payout. And that's when that, you know, I had my personal experience. When you jump, the net will appear. Because my thinking was the worst case scenario, I had some money and savings. 
I had bought and sold some properties and I was like, all right, worst case, I take six months off. I go do some bucket list travel, get out of my system. And then the worst case scenario, I have to get another job. And that's how mentally I kept telling myself the worst thing you get another job, but you know, get out of your comfort zone, go try something like you have this intuitive nudge, go after it. And I did. And, you know, three and a half years later, it's evolved into much more. I published a book. I have my own podcast, Mind Over Matter. And I just continually teach the power of mindset and how to actually create your ideal life through manifesting. So good. So let's talk about like the leaping and the net will appear. Mm-hmm. Is it that simple or is there like a center ground where people aren't just jumping off cliffs and smashing their face into the ground? Uh, or is it really that simple that the wings always appear when we make the leap? Is there some type of center ground or just make the leap? I mean, I have other people I've interviewed on my podcast and friends, similar situations. I just believe, and I can't, there is no foolproof method, right? I, I can't, I am no clairvoyant. But when you have an internal nudge, you are meant for more or that you should really apply for that job or you've had this thing and you really want to start that business, that internal nudge is yours for a reason. And I just highly suggest you follow it. So good. I totally believe in divine internal nudges. Uh, I have experienced them personally. For those who don't know about divine internal nudges, how do they know the difference between something that's coming from their mind that's that's maybe an egoic bullshit thing rather than like a divine nudge. How does somebody distinguish the difference between the two? So they're totally different. So an ego thing, what you touched on ego is very heady. It's literally in your head. It feels stress. It feels chaotic. I experience this. We all do, but when you're in your head and and you're analyzing and you can't figure it out, it's that pushing, forcing, trying to make something happen versus that internal nudge is this, it's like a slight tug. It's, it's almost like a whisper. It's never forcing, demanding. It's just quietly ushering you that here's another way. Total yes. difference. Total difference. How, do, how does somebody come out of their head and into their body to be able to sit in the pocket to actually listen? Uh, okay. So again, there's no right way. And I am one that like... Um, I like movement. So I remember when I first started meditating, meditation was very difficult for me. And it is going to be for anybody who's new to it because you're used to go, go, go monkey mind. And when you're sitting still and trying to create that calm and connect with your breath and and tune in, that monkey mind is going to go wild. But if you can think of like, and I keep calling it the monkey mind, that just internal chaos, that stress, that that's just what I call it. Monkey mind. When you can tune into it and kind of treat it like a two-year-old having a temper tantrum and just calm it. And it's about overcoming yourself and just to calm it. And, you know, I will come back to you. I'm not ignoring you. We'll get that to-do list done. But right now for these few minutes, I'm going to connect with it. I also, moving meditations are powerful. You can do it hiking in nature. You know, I don't have headphones. I find it very powerful for myself running. I love that moving meditation. And for me running, I've had great epiphanies again with no music, no distraction. I'm just there. I'm so present in the moment. And that's when I can like clear that mental clutter. Mm. Is it as simple as just like deciding to clear the mental clutter or is it kind of like going to the gym where you just got to put in the work and over time you kind of start clearing and paying attention and your ability to do that becomes stronger and stronger. I'm going to tell you, it's kind of both. So one, yes, I do call it building the mindset muscle. You do have to do the work. You have to tame your body to sit still in that meditation. But there's also this fine line of surrendering to letting go, to stop trying to control your life and instead just be in the flow of life. It's total difference. Mm. You talk about like three steps to manifest things. Like what are, what are those steps? Oh my gosh, I love manifesting. So again, like I said earlier, we're all manifesting every day, just whether or not we're aware of it. Um, like an, a legitimate three steps. I have many different steps on how I do this, but one that I love to talk about is future riff as if. So that means if you think as if, speak as if, and act as if, whatever you want is already yours. Because most people live from a space of, I will be happy when 
fill in the blank, right? I will be happy when I'm in a relationship, when I have more money, when I have a better job, a new house, a new car. And that's just, that's not how it works. The law of attraction, this manifestation principle states, we are literally all energy, all of us. And our thoughts are an electric force that put it out into the universe. And our heart, our feeling space is what draws it back mag magnetically to us. So when you can get an alignment, that's why it's think, speak, and act as if. When you can get into alignment that you're thinking and feeling as though it's already yours. So instead you flip that, I'll be happy when. You flip it too. I'm so happy and grateful now that when you're already feeling freedom and abundance and in love and joy and gratitude, then the relationship shows up, the money shows up, the job, the business, the whatever. But you have to come from a state of already living and believing that's yours and then it shows up. Mm. I'm a big fan of like the OGs, like Neville Goddard is one of my favorite and one of his books is Feeling is the Secret. And I think at least, especially in our Western world, it's been weird. Like, I don't think a lot of people actually know how to feel. Like it's been my experience with a lot of people. They don't really know how to open their heart and what it's like to live with a heart open. And so when they hear these things that you're saying, like, we'll believe in and all that, it's almost like they believe it at a, as a mental construct in their head, but their heart's completely disconnected from the process. And then what you're sharing, it doesn't work <laughs> because we're trying yeah. to create from the head. So how does somebody like really start tapping in to, to feeling? Well, you, you really touched on that. And I agree. We are all programmed like this conditioning. Think about our media, right? We're all programmed into fear uh, that I haven't watched. Literally, I haven't watched the news in years. I just choose. I am very aware of what I input. So I'm always reading, watching documentaries. I love learning. YouTube is my go-to. But you're right. We are so conditioned and living in this analytical stress mind. Go, go, go. I don't know who started it, but in the masses follow that you have to hustle and grind to get ahead. No, you don't. And I love the mug. I've seen it. They, it says hustle and it's slashed out. And instead it says align. So when you can get that thinking, feeling connected, you're right, we've got to get into our heart space. And so you can do that through meditation or journaling or just calming all that outside noise, the distraction in your environment. And you've got to, you've got to connect back within. Mm, makes perfect sense. What's been one of your, go ahead. I was just going to say that just made me think there's actually, um, I'm going to forget the name of the book, but you can in, Google it. But you can do a heart opening meditation. It's a great exercise, especially if you're new to meditation, because you're right. If we're not open to receive, you're never going to get those desires you want. And so if this is closed, it's like it's all caged up because you don't want to get hurt and your ex hurt you and your boss was a dick or whatever. So you've created this literal shield around your heart. Instead, this heart opening meditation, you put your palms together, extend them out in front of you. And then you're just like with each inhale, you're opening your arms wide, you know, like this wing expansion, letting it in. And then you exhale, bring your hands back together. And just this, this movement of opening yourself to receive will shift it as well. Do you think most people are like aware of how worthy they believe they are to receive? Are you an Abraham Hicks? I, I'm not, but I understand this oh, okay. game pretty deeply. <laughs> so I love Abe and Abe, that's what I call him. Like we're tight like that, but I love Abraham Hicks and Abraham is very much the law of attraction. And it's about getting downstream into alignment, but literally that's all Abe talks about somewhere, somehow a seed was planted into your mind. So you don't feel worthy or enough. You don't feel worthy of the money or the relationship, or it's that whole this limiting belief we have consciously, but more likely subconsciously. And until you eradicate the BS or your belief system, I mean, your life will not change. Mm -hmm. Totally. So how does somebody go around doing some of the subconscious work? Like how do they even become conscious of, of what's subconsciously driving them? Right. Okay. So an easy one to do is, okay, we have somewhere between like 70,000 thoughts per day. I, you cannot obviously monitor all of them, but the good news is you're not that creative and most of your thoughts are on repeat from yesterday. So instead, I like to sit, I think of it as sitting back and becoming curious and it's like, oh, that thought, that thought I had that I'm not enough or 
that, you know, um, I'll never make money doing this or become curious and go, well, that, that's an interesting thought, but just take a journal or what I call inventory of these thoughts you have. So let's say, for example, cause this is relatable to most people. If you feel like you're struggling with your finances, take inventory of what thoughts you have behind money. You never have enough. It's hard to come by. You don't get paid enough. Um, and obviously this goes back to conditioning what it was like growing up or even your environment. If you're hanging out with broke ass people, don't expect to be like the one person that happens to make it in the crew. No, like the average of the five people you hang out with is a very popular thing for a reason. So maybe you need a different circle of friends. But yeah, I would just start taking inventory and become aware of these repetitive thoughts. So what I do is I call it to catch and replace. You catch it. And sometimes, you know, you do like I'll snap and go, oh, I'm doing it again. And then you replace it with a more affirmative thought. Money comes quickly and easily, or I can make money doing this. I am worthy. I am lovable. I am fill in the blank because whatever follows I am, you become. I know that was kind of a lot. No, it's more or less in summary, take inventory, start becoming aware, and you can catch and replace to reprogram. So how does one, let's just use, you know, I think you said something like I'm worthy of my desires. It's one thing for somebody to run it as an affirmation where again, we're, we're like at the mind level, mm. but how do they like drop it down in to really feel I'm worthy of my desires? Like, do they just say it enough over time and it drops in or is, or is there, is there a way to like really drop in and, and be with that? Okay, so that's where it gets into that alignment. You can think it. You can say as many affirmations as you want. And that's why I think affirmations are a great tool, but they are not enough. Because you, if you are walking around going, I'm happy and I am grateful and I am abundant, but you are feeling broke and sad and lonely, you have that disconnect. So that's why even the three steps I shared with you, think, speak, and act as if. Not only do you have to be thinking it, saying it, but feel like you've got to back it with emotion. And that's what everybody says in this manifesting world. The thoughts need backed by emotion. And then when you start walking around like this proud, brave, courageous soul, because you think and you feel it. So now you're walking as if that reality is yours. You literally embody it and you create that. That's what you will become. Mm. Do you think the way to open up the emotions is like through shadow work? Like rather than looking at the positive, is the positive possible to drop in by being with the thing that we fear the most? So give me an example of shadow work. So for instance, one person may want to go create a business because they don't feel enough. And so everything they try to create is in resistance to never not feeling enough. Like they're like, I don't want to feel not enough. If, if I wasn't enough, like, I don't know if I could survive my whole identity is at stake. And I'm wondering and curious, like if somebody was just with the feelings, the experience, and they went to the darkness, the shadow, and they were with, I am not enough in that place. I've experienced, you see the light. And from that place, you now you're opened up because you're no longer resisting it because you realize you're, you're not, not enough. You just are. And from this place, now we have a whole new capacity to use our agency as a human being to actually go create what we feel called to create. Does that make sense? Yes. I think my only thing that I would suggest on that is I think a lot of people, and that's why I'm not into talk therapy, because if you want to go talk it out, you're going to put yourself back into that emotion, that experience, and you're just going to like sulk and marinate and stay stuck in it. So I think there's a fine line of understanding. I call them, I guess, more triggers, but understanding your trigger and being aware of it and like releasing it and letting it go and realize, oh, that was just a thought, like detaching from it. That is powerful. And then you can move on. But I think it's just that fine line of you don't want to become aware of it and stay stuck and keep it replaying, you know? Sure. Do you think some emotion gets stored in the body? Like it's oh, beyond our thoughts? Oh, 100%. And that's why I love, um, I've interviewed some great guests, but uh, I'm sure you've heard of EFT, emotional freedom technique. Yep. So that's about tapping. But yes, any chronic pain in the body, any dis-ease in the body is all trapped emotion. 
Louise Hay, I call her the godmother of personal development. She has a phenomenal book called You Can Heal Your Life. And in the back of the book is this great glossary. I refer to it. I'm like, why does my shoulder keep hurting? What, what am I storing in my shoulder or my left foot? And like, I know with the foot, it's the fear of stepping forward. So anyway, yes, any chronic pain in the body is trapped emotion. And when you can release this emotion, that's how you, you just, that's how you move forward. Awesome. So I'm going to circle back for some humans, they have stored emotion, stored trauma, and I am not enough or whatever their limiting belief is. So how, how can they be with that? in order to allow them to actually process it, to release it could be through talk therapy, not just like talking about it forever, but science shows by just expressing it, talking it out, writing it out, expressing it, we release 80% of its charge that's within us. And it's a lot easier to navigate 20% of it than hundred percent. Right. So how can they, how can people like release some of the emotion? So they're not in resistance to like, if you've studied, and which I know you have, you've probably heard what you resist persists, right? And I think in the manifesting where a lot of people don't speak to what you resist persists, they're always wanting to look forward. So how do we find this, this, this balance, this centered approach of being with the things that we resist and also being committed to do what's required, both at a thinking level, the doing the work and the emotion work to move towards our desires as well. Does that make sense? So I believe that comes down to choice and we all have past experiences. Yeah. I think that is the easiest word choice. We all have things that happen to us, right? But it's whether or not you create an identity around it, or let's say, you know, your husband left you six years ago, but you are still stuck from six years ago in this victim mindset that your husband left you, you're not enough. And you've been relishing in this BS, your belief system for six years. And it's like, well, that is not serving you. That is keeping, you are not going to attract or draw in an amazing relationship because you are bundled in this victimhood. So I think it just comes down to, you know, we all have life experiences, learn from it, grow from it. I love the saying you can evolve or repeat. So I would choose no matter what your past trauma experience. I know a lot of us have sexual trauma, things that happened to us as a child. I know I I held on to something for like 29 years because this very fearful, scared little four-year-old girl didn't know any better. And until I was like 33, did I realize, oh my God, it's time to let it go, to let her. I literally, this happened through a meditation, a guided meditation at a Tony Robbins event. But I just hugged that little girl, let her know she was safe, and I fucking moved on. But that was 29 years I held on to this thing, keeping this identity that this thing happened to me. Mm. comes down to choice. Let it go. So what I'm hearing you say is like part of what we do as humans is we create identities. And the great news of what we have, the ability as a human, is we have free will to choose a different identity. Like if the identity that we have isn't serving us, then we can choose to be and do and have from that new identity. You can recreate every single day. Are you into Dr. Joe Dispenza at all? A little bit, not a whole lot. I know who who he is. Yes. I love him. I recently attended his seven day week long retreat. And so what Dr. Joe Dispenza teaches When you can come from a space of this identity, I am not Heather, I'm not a female, I'm not white, I am not American, I'm not 35. When you can let go of your body, time, and environment and realize we are all energy, we are all soul, we are all part of whatever you want to call it, God, source, the universe, energy, I don't care what you resonate with, whatever works for you, understand that we are literally, and this has been hard for me. This is a very hard disconnect because I think as humans, it is so easy to judge and compare to other humans. But if we could understand, and now I'm trying to look at people and go, oh, well, that's an interesting um, part of me. Because we are all, if you think of us all as one ocean, we are all a droplet of the ocean. We are not these separate identity droplets. But I think social media, you know, we people create these facades and these identities and we're trying to live up to somebody's highlight reel. But when you can, when you can let go of 
you're not this body and this name and this person and this whatever you've created. I think that can give a lot of people freedom too. Totally, totally. One of the things I believe is our power and our potential and our purpose is found in the paradox. Meaning you're 100% right. We're not our bodies. We're not our thoughts. We're not our emotions. We're not our name. We're not a boy. We're not a girl. Like we're a soul. And (laughs) we are a male or a female and have a body and have emotions and thoughts. So it's like, well, which is true? Maybe they're both true. Well, that's why if I try to come from a perspective of I'm literally a source. I am, I mean, a soul. I am, and I'm having a human experience. Yes. And instead, we attach to this hu- human thing so much. It's like we're we're fighting for our the need to be right. And it's like, oh, when you can step back and I choose to be happy or right, that's on you. Exactly. Like you have nothing to prove or nothing to defend. Like you're worthy just because you are. Yeah. And from that place, you have massive amounts of power to figure out how you want to use your agency and all of your creative abilities to create whatever it is you feel called to. And you don't even need a why. You can just choose to create it because you choose to create it because you feel divinely called to create it. Okay. So you just made me think of something. Have you seen Disney's new movie, Soul? I started it with my daughter. My daughter is two months and two, or two years and two months old. So we made it like through the first 20 minutes and I haven't okay. finished it yet. She's just a babe. So I watched it a couple of times. I love Disney. I think Disney always puts in like really great metaphors and, uh, you know, like Frozen and Lion King are some of my faves. But anyway, this new Disney film, Soul, I remember in my 20s trying to seek and find my passion. I mean, sorry, my purpose. What am I here to, what is my purpose? I I remember Googling it and watching YouTube videos, trying to find my purpose. And soul has amazing messaging. And it simply says, our purpose is here to live and experience and come from a space of joy. And you know how people are are seeking their, um, like, they, soul talks about and just chase your spark, whatever lights you up. If you're a painter, do that. If you're a singer, you love food, you love travel, photography, podcasting, like where you chase your spark, but your purpose is to live and experience joy. Yep. I totally agree. I, I like saying like our purpose is to create whatever we feel called to create. Like I, I truly believe God, universe, spirit, source, whatever we want to call it. I'll call it God wants to have a human experience as me, wants to have a human experience as you, wants to have a human experience to every single person who's listening to this podcast. And it's uniquely different for me, for you, for every single person listening to this podcast, right? They want to have, God wants to have a unique experience as them, whatever they feel divinely inspired to go out and create. And the cool thing is, no matter how old we are, like it's just the next evolution of creation (laughs) is, is living in purpose. It's exciting. I agree. hundred percent. What have been some of your biggest breakthroughs in your life thus far on the planet? Man, I was just messaging with one of my girlfriends this morning. She lives in Omaha. I'm in Denver. And uh, cause we study this stuff. We love it. And it's so great to have somebody with a like mind that you can connect and talk to about this stuff. Cause for a lot of, I feel like the mainstream still think this is woo woo and new agey. But anyway, what I was sharing with her, I was like, it's crazy. I study this stuff. I'm immersed in it. I am teaching it. And I still have the high highs where I'm just like feeling it. I'm vibing a rock star. I'm in alignment. I'm in flow. And then the next day I can be like, oh my God, what am I doing? I feel totally lost. And it's just like, oh, it doesn't have to be this volatile. And so I remember I did ayahuasca a year ago. Pretty cool experience. I just love trying new things. But the message I received in ayahuasca is that all suffering is self-imposed. It's kind of a lot to bite off. But when you realize that everything stems from thought, all, quote, issues in your life are all stem from your thinking. And when you can step into your power and claim 100% responsibility for your current life and then make the choice that you want to become aware and consciously create this new vision, this new identity, whatever you want it to be, that's how you take your power back. And that's how you can live in flow on the reg. But it is about that mindset muscle. I mean, you got to do this work every day, the morning routine, stay consistent. 
um, it's work, but mm-hmm. you know, it's doing work for yourself, living the life you want or, or, you know, going through life's motions. What do you want? What are some of the routines that you have in the morning that kind of keep you grounded in a place of power? So especially in 2020, I think that was a challenging year for most, most everybody, but thank heavens I had personal development experience because the thing that kept me going and forward focused, I get up every morning, I listen to my morning manifesto. That's just something I've created. I, I wrote it out, recorded my own voice and listened to it. And so it's this whole very descriptive and I update it regularly every few months when things have manifested and I move on. And so I listen to it, but I, I not only lay there and I listen to it, but I'm visualizing it and I'm feeling it. And that's how, you know, you, the connection. So I listen to my manifesto in the morning and then I, I go to the gym. The gym is where I really just embody. I'm doing the work and, and then I, I start my day. I love walking meditations are better for me than sitting still. And, um, you know, I just, I'm continually rewriting my vision or I know I'm going to go out today. And, um, I decided I want a new vision board because I feel like I don't have something focal point. I might have it on Pinterest or, you know, I've made a manifesto movie, but I want something hanging on my wall of these desires. So I just, I'm always doing the work every day. Awesome. Awesome. So if I hear you correctly, it's just like, audio inputs, visual inputs, anything to create feeling inputs. That's part of the work of you living into that vision as scripture says, like it is done. Like it's just a matter of time, but here it's done. Right. Yeah. And I love, I, a mantra I use is living in excited anticipation. So that's creating the faith, the certainty and the knowing that this lifestyle you desire, the, the money, the relationships, the experiences, the objects, whatever, when you live from a space of excited anticipation, you're not worrying, you're not lacking, you're not stressed out because you're just like waiting to be surprised on how it's coming along. Mm. Do you ever worry? I do, but that whole catch and replace, I catch myself. I'm like, oh, I'm doing it again. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. How many times do you have to catch and replace a day? Do you know when I used to, I call it falling down the rabbit hole. I wouldn't say it's daily. It's definitely not daily, but I used to fall down the rabbit hole and that could last days and sometimes weeks just going through the yuck. And now it lasts, maybe it's a couple hours or maybe you, that's when you, you choose. It's like, okay, I'm going to feel this and feel the funk and whatever for 15 minutes or five minutes, or I'm going to get up and I'm going to go for a run. I'm going to clear my mind. And so it's just that constant coming back, coming back. I read a book by, um, I think the guy's name was Richard Dots. It's a book called Dollars Flow to Me Easily. And um, in that book, he talked about, I don't know what he called it. Maybe it was the worry folder. Maybe I, I named it the worry folder when I read the concept. But essentially, he, he said, create a folder. And as you're worrying about your day, write your worry down on a piece of paper and then put it in the folder and then tell yourself, hey, I'll worry about that at whatever time. Like you pick a time. Uh, of the day for you to worry for 15 minutes or 30 minutes, whatever, whatever you decide. So after reading the book, what I decided to do was just on my phone and my, my note, my notepad on my iPhone, I just called it the worry folder. And anytime I had a worry that popped into my mind, I was like, I will worry about that. Like before I get ready for bed. Uh, and we were traveling at the time I was in uh, Madeira Island uh, off of Portugal. And so anytime a worry came down, write it down on my phone, write it down on my phone. And then when it you know came time for bed, be nine 30, whatever, I would go outside on the back balcony. We had a 180 degree view of the, the ocean there. And I would just look at these things and I was just like, wow. Yeah, these are stupid. <laughs> like they, were, they weren't Perfect. even like big worries. And it was just so interesting to be able to catch them, put them somewhere and decide to worry about them later. And then later realize how, how small of a thing it was. Um, but it was a great technique for me to start becoming aware of how much my monkey mind just worries about stupid shit. That's not even worthy of my time. I like that. And how perfect that you set it aside so that you weren't not going to pay attention. And then when you went back to it, you could look and go, Oh, what a waste of time. Because instead, if you had sat there and marinated and kept thinking, and then you create this, this vortex of, Oh shit, you know, you create something out of nothing. Totally. So good for you. I like awesome. that. If you could go back in time and give yourself some wisdom that would help her collapse time and get results faster, what would you tell her? Oh, man. 
I think when it comes down to corporate, because I just sat there kind of miserable for years, I would have jumped sooner. You know, like trust that intuitive nudge, whatever it is, and um, don't delay. Awesome. And if people want to learn how, how to work with you, they want to get your three tips for manifesting. I think you have a video series. Where can they go? How can they contact you? Yes, I actually have a free video training on how to manifest more money now because I think that's what everybody wants more of. It makes the world go around. Um, you can visit me at heatherhakes.com and opt into the free training. Awesome. Cool. Well, Heather, thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Well, there you have it, my friend, Heather Hakes in the house. I feel we covered a lot of ground about manifesting. Now, if you didn't pick up on it, feeling is the secret to really manifesting anything you want in this lifetime. And it's feeling plus taking massive action. And I just feel I need to say one thing here. Just because you feel a divine nudge to do something doesn't mean that you're not going to be afraid. Like there is a way to feel the fear, do the thing anyway, and know that it is done. And I truly believe when you have the ability to be with the spectrum, you have limitless ambition and drive to create the life of your dreams. So that's all I have for you in this episode of the Anthony Johnny Mix podcast. I hope it's inspired you in some way. I hope it's helped you understand how to really manifest anything you want. If you know someone who needs to hear this episode, send it over to them in their DM, screenshot it, share it on social media, send them an email, text message, whatever you have to do to get this episode into their ear holes. Also, keep those five-star reviews coming over on iTunes because that is what helps get the show found by more people and it helps others break through to a new level of freedom purpose and success as well. So thank you so much for being here, my friend. Until next time, I'm out. Peace. Well, that's all I've got for this episode of the Anthony John Amix podcast, but we have plenty more to help you become unstoppable in life and business. So head on over to ajamix.com for exclusive resources, information, and tools to help you break through to a new level of freedom, purpose, and success. I look forward to having you back for the next episode. Bye for now.